Welcome to Movie Friends. We're your hosts, Seth and Michelle. And today we're talking about When Harry Met Sally from 1989. Directed by Rob Reiner. Written by Nora Ephron. Cinematography by Barry Sonnenfeld. Composed by Mark Scheiman and Thomas Richard Sharp. Starring Meg Ryan, Billy Crystal, Carrie Fisher, and Bruno Kirby. Michelle, how are you? I'm good, Seth. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, summer in New York. And I am warm. I know. As Ant says, did I say this last week? He loves this weather. He calls it comfortably sticky. Ooh. Ooh, likes comfortably sticky. It's an oxymoron. That sounds like a a hairy line if I've ever heard one. Mm. Yeah. Gee, willikers. Right? Yeah, I'm not comfortably sticky. I'm just sticky. I know. Same. And I'm not comfortable. And I, I think I've said before, I record in like the second floor of our house. And the temperature difference is pretty drastic, so we have to run, like, an AC up here and a fan. But when I'm recording, I cannot do that. I know. So it is, like, if you watch any clips from this, as <laughs> you might be able to tell <laughs> where we are in the show, <laughs> depending on how wet I am. Oh, I can't wait. We could piece that together. Oh, it's starting. You just Did you just wipe a little sweat drips yeah. from the mouth? Yep. yep. Cool. Well, anyway. Anyway. Happy July. Hmm. So this movie was recommended to us from Brian from What A Picture Podcast. And we just so happened to have guested on their show. Him and his wife, Hannah, have a show called What A Picture. We went on a few months back to talk about Some Like It Hot. And he sent us in a voicemail explaining why he picked this movie. And I thought it was so funny. So let's listen to that really quick. Hello, Movie Friends Podcast. I am so delighted that you, too, decided to do When Harry Met Sally for your friend request month. So I suggested this movie not only because it is an absolute delight and just amazingly made and especially amazingly written i i think it's uh it's writing is excellent but also i suggested this because seth has a somewhat eclectic taste and poor michelle you go along with him on all of these wild rides of different movies and so i thought i'd suggest something nice that i thought you would both enjoy and this movie is certainly that it is a crowd pleaser and just absolutely delightful. So enjoy it, and we'll talk soon. Wow. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. So sweet. (laughs) Is it nice to know that someone is thinking about you? It's nice to know that the people understand how I'm feeling. Yeah. You know, you picking your obscure movies every week. Although lately, oh. lately it hasn't been because of, you know, June and this is listener request yeah. month. So yeah. it's been a minute. But you, you thank had you. a good little respite. Right. Again, like is, come August, I'm nervous. Is it respite or respite? TBH. I never use either. So I have no idea. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't use it, but I, you I don't can, know. I am awful with words and I make up words all the time right? and I use them confidently and just hope that no one catches on. Nice. Yeah, I guess so. So we can pick whichever (laughs) one you want to use and I'll be like, cool, Seth, that works. Anyway, this is a movie that you've seen in the past. I have seen this. Yes. Is this a movie you've seen like a lot, like once or? I thought I saw it more than I did. But as I was watching it, I'm like, oh, no, I think I've only seen this a couple of times. Like, it's never one that I will go to. Like, I I personally enjoy You've Got Mail and Sleep Us in Seattle more for talking about Efron movies. But I definitely have seen this. Yeah. What about you? What's your history with this one? I had never seen this until last year. Oh, wow. In fact, I had never seen any Nora Efron movies except for Julie... Julie, Julia, Julia and Julie. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Yeah, that one's, it's good, 
but I had never seen any. And so I watched this and Sleepless in Seattle last year. Sleepless in Seattle really struck me for how like dark and depressing Tom Hanks's character is. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. And then I saw this and I was like, all right, here we go. This is the movie that everyone is always talking about. Of course, there are a few different scenes that you just know from existing in life. The Cats' is deli scene. Maybe that's really it. I don't know. Well, I think the overall, can men and women really just... Can, can men and women really just be friends? And right, not have right, sex right. involved? I think that this right. movie, that's like their, the overarching theme. Overarching theme. See? There I go. Screwing up words. Okay, so on that one, I also... We'll do both. I'll okay. say overarching and overarching. And I, I, I go back and forth on both of those. So, mm, you know. Okay. Hey, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we need someone smart. We do. Uh, Kate, Kate, Kate teaches <gasps> language. Yeah. I, I wonder if I trigger anyone, any of our listeners. I'm like, oh, Michelle. Oh, well, oh. there, there are Come on. many things that bother me about podcasts. Yeah. Luckily, I can edit this show so I can remove those things for myself, but I'm sure there are things people listen to five minutes of this and they're like, nope. Nope. <laughs> that guy sounds like the dog from Wacky Races when he laughs. It's so annoying. I wish I knew what that was. The dog from Wacky Races? I have no idea what you're talking about. What's Wacky Races? It was an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Snidely Whiplash. Oh. They, they, they had uh, races and they were wacky. Oh, that really just describes the wacky races <laughs> real well. <laughs> there was this little dog named Muttley, and uh-huh. when he laughed, he would laugh like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. This and is that's slightly how I ringing laugh. a bell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, overarching theme in this movie: Can men and women really just be friends? I think. Billy Crystal, in the beginning, he says the sex thing, but I almost feel like you could replace that with just the word romance. In what way? Like, as they discuss this idea over the course of the movie, I don't think it's, like, specific to sex. I think it's just feelings, romance. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. is it possible to be friends with somebody and not have feelings for them? When this movie is made in 1989, we are, of course, just talking about straight heterosexual relationships, right? To where now, it's like, okay, can anybody be friends with anybody without developing feelings for them? And of course, the answer is yes, right? We have relationships with people all the time, and we don't develop feelings for them. I think that it's, it's like a discussion that starts off on a faulty premise, because the person who's proposing this isn't like Sally. Sally, she has her quirks, but she's not Harry. <laughs> no. And like Harry definitely has some messed up ideas about like life and love. And so he's the one who's kind of like forcing this question. And I think it is a question worth looking at for sure. So what do you think? It's so layered. Correct. Because like yeah. ultimately, right, if we're just going to strip down the answer and get to what I truly believe. I truly believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, I think it depends on the situation where you are in life, what you're looking for, what you're seeking. Cause that all comes into play. Also there's levels of crushes and I've had multiple friend crushes, not necessarily romantic crushes. Just like, Oh my gosh, I meet someone. I get along with them. We connect. I have a friend crush on you. Doesn't mean I sure. want to do any of the nasties and get nakies with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, true. It's a great way of putting it. Is sure, this, for sure. Is right, this the right, wacky right. races, dog? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, okay. but right, you meet someone and you gravitate towards them, and it can be for so many different yeah. reasons yeah. that have nothing to do with a desire to be in a romantic relationship with them. Let's like, call it the nakies. From now. Sure. <laughs> yes, getting Let's romantic. Do that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you have like a doctor or a therapist that you like connect with and you're like, oh yeah, you know, you're looking at me like I'm crazy, right? Yeah, <laughs> because I don't view my therapist or doctor as a friend. 
It's not a friend no, crush. No, 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 no. It's just like any type of person, you know, like maybe like a teacher or like just someone. I'm just saying like there could be someone who helps you kind of like guide your life in a way. Sure. Yeah. And you're like, wow, you know, I really respect this person. I'm, I want to listen to what they have to say. And you are kind of gravitating towards them for that reason. There could be another person that, you know, like share from Clueless. You're kind of gravitating towards them because you're seen as like a project of, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help this person and I'm really drawn to them. Right. It has nothing to do with having feelings for them. And then like you were saying, there are times where you just meet somebody and you're like, yes, this is like, I am fully in on whatever this person is doing. I want to be around this person, but it doesn't have to become like a romantic thing. I just think that we're so stunted emotionally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Combined with being so driven sexually that we can confuse those two things. Yeah, it can get messy. I I mean, I think, and I don't want to generalize, but if you're secure in yourself and you're in a relationship with someone and you're in a particular part of life where you can make a friend or connect with someone on a deeper level, then you know what lane you're in. But sometimes it can come by surprise. Like, oh my God, I'm starting to have feelings for this person. I'm in a relationship and so forth. So that that gets messy. And like later on when they reconnect, Harry kind of like changes the rules. Because he's like, yeah, let's be friends. And she's like, well, you said we couldn't. He's like, yeah, but two people in a relationship, they can be friends. And then immediately backtracks and he's like, well, actually, they can't because then the people that they're in relationships with don't understand. And that I agree with totally, totally. Yeah. It is, it's much easier to navigate your own feelings and your own intentions, right? Okay, w- what am I thinking with this person? What What's going on? I just enjoy being around them, all those things, right? But then how do you communicate that to the person that you're in a romantic relationship with? And how much do they believe you? I, I do right. I do agree with Harry on that point, 100%. I do, It too. can be very difficult to express to your husband, like, yeah, I want to hang out with this person all the time, but I don't have a crush on them. Right, right. Right. I also think, I mean, I don't want to speak for you and your friend group, but, like, for... And you're a part of, like, my friend group that I see on the regular. We're very secure in where we're just... Some of us are in a couple in a relationship and some of us are single and we all can hang out with each other regardless if it's male or female. And so I think that's a rarity because I have lots of male friends, but Anne's not worried. And then Anne's sure. friends with females, but they're also a part of the group. Like, no, there hasn't been anybody new come into the group where one of us is like worried or the sure. flags go up. Sure, sure, sure. When I was younger, I used to be so jealous like yeah. Bad. Oh, not me too. Good. Very angry and suspicious and jealous. And I saw what that did in terms of like making a relationship very unenjoyable. And with my wife, I've always taken the stance of if she leaves me or if she like cheats on me one day down the road, I'll deal with that then. I'm not going to live my entire life up until that point suspicious and bitter and angry and no, you can't do that. No, you can't. Because if I do that, it could cause the thing (laughs) to happen that I hope won't happen. And if it never happens, I spent my entire life angry and suspicious and keeping her from things for no reason. Right. So you just, you got to let it go, you know. If yeah, but somebody... you're you're a secure person, and you it's what it sounds like you're in a secure relationship, and I think that takes a lot of work foundationally. Like Aunt and I view us as a very secure. We're two secure people in a secure relationship, so there's no worry. Yeah, I mean, maybe is, does that mean I'm too comfortable? I don't think so. I think that makes it healthy. I don't know. I don't think I so. Think and I think healthy. you you trust in that other person, but you also don't trust in your ability to control that other person. One hundred percent. And I always say this. I don't trust anyone. A hundred percent. Because yeah. we're at the end of the day, we are all human. Oh, oh, <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Like I like, trust no one. Truly. Free no will one. No exists. One. And yep. if but if that happens, 
is it your fault or is it the person's fault who did right. it, right? It's yeah. the person's fault who did it. You couldn't stop it anyway. You can't control it. Mm-hmm. That is the arena of love is opening yourself up to another person and you get invested and you build things together and then they screw it all up and you're like, no, but we are not immune <laughs> to that. No, <laughs> no, no one is. A, it is life and you can't control life. You can't. And if you try to control them, it's, it ain't going to work. It's the same thing with kids. You know, I, I want my kids to do certain things, but if I try to control them, they're going to rebel and I'm going to get the opposite effect or they, they're not going to want to do what I want them to do anyway. And, who right. cares? We should enjoy our time together. It's true. You know? So, okay, well, we that was heavy, but we... <laughs> now that that's been debunked. Well, thanks for joining us. We've talked about <laughs> When Harry Met Sally and how we feel about it. But, I mean, that is... I think it's, you know, it's important to start off there because that Absolutely. is, like, the whole point of the yeah. whole thing. And originally, Rob Reiner wanted them to not end up together. I would have loved that. that I them- truly would have loved that coming together was actually going to prove the point that men and women cannot be friends together. And that if you do add romance to a friendship, that it all falls apart. And I I don't believe that at all. What? That if you add romance, then you can't be friends afterwards? Not at all. Not at all. I I was good friends with a few girls that I was involved with after being romantically involved. It's over. What do you, you know, who cares? Again, can't be friends with somebody. I think that's super situational and what happens. Sure. Of course. But it definitely can be done. But just because we dated. Right. If things end, what? I'm going to like. Well. Nothing you say is funny now. Nothing you say is interesting. Yeah. Come on. Like. Yeah. I guess so. So this movie is written by Nora Ephron, the queen herself, directed by Rob Reiner. Mike. From All in the Family, Meathead. That's all I ever think about. (laughs) Really? Yes, I loved All in the Family. That's how I know Rob Reiner. Mike. Okay. All All in the Family. I didn't love All in the Family. Oh, man. When I was a kid, I just was like, it's so angry, and I don't know what they're talking about. I loved when there was the Jefferson's crossover episode. That was so good. Yeah, that was was a good one. I was a big fan of when um, Sammy Davis Jr., Mm-hmm. Yes. Big yeah. Fan of that episode. Oh, that, was that was really so good. good. Yeah. So good. But I was like, I want to watch, uh, you know, Happy Days or Laverne and Shirley because they're funnier and not so good, too. yelling at me through the screen about politics that I don't understand. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and both of them has said, and it's really not hard to see if you've if you've listened to either of them talk very clearly. Sally is a stand-in for Nora. And Harry is a stand-in for Reiner. They worked together on the movie. Nora was a journalist, just like Sally is. And the way that she wrote the script was she interviewed Reiner and a few other people at Castle Rock. And they just told her, like, all this horrible stuff about how they felt. And she was like, wow, okay. Early on in the movie... When they're on the plane, Harry is telling her, well, you know, men after sex, they just want to leave. And, you know, they're like counting down the minutes. Like, is this an acceptable time to leave? And Sally says, that can't be true. Is that true? Really? You feel like that? And all of that stuff was lifted, like, directly from how Reiner really felt. He was coming off of his marriage to Penny Marshall, and he was just very bitter and angry about love. And that's a lot of the reasons why Harry is bitter and angry about love and relationships. Likewise, Nora was the inspiration. She didn't write this scene originally, but she was the inspiration for the Katz's Deli scene where she told them, okay, well, these are things, you know, that females are thinking that you're not aware of. And you can hear both of their voices, like in their characters a lot. Mm -hmm. If you like, again, like listen to an interview with Rob Reiner and you can just, close your eyes and see Billy Crystal (laughs) like say say these things. Same thing with Sally. Rob Reiner, he is one of those directors like we were talking about with Peter Weir. He's almost like a secret great director. He has one of the most impressive, diverse runs for an American filmmaker of all time. 
he starts off with Spinal Tap. Have you seen Spinal Tap? No. Oh, my gosh. We're going to talk about that one eventually. Cool. He starts off with Spinal Tap, which is arguably the best mockumentary ever made. Next up, he does The Shore Thing, which is like a teen rom-com. After that, he has Stand By Me, which is one of the best coming-of-age films ever. I saw that in school. High school. Great movie. Yeah. The Princess Bride. We love that. One of the best fantasy, romantic, comedy, mixture movies ever. Great, great American film. Then he does When Harry Met Sally, which is considered to be the best rom-com of all time. Then he does Misery with James Caan and Kathy Bates, based off the Stephen King book, which in Harry Met Sally, Harry is reading a copy of Misery. Ah. Quick side note. It drives me crazy how Harry reads books. I don't know if you noticed this or not. Twice in the film, you see Harry in bed and he's reading a book at page one. And then he immediately (laughs) skips the entire book and goes to the last page. Well, he said he always reads the ending. Right. That's horrible. That's crazy. I don't know. I think that's a pretty funny quirk. Like, I would want to talk to someone that. No, I didn't do that. Okay. I'm just saying, I think that's a funny quirk. (sighs) Whenever you're reading a book, it's like such a temptation because you can just immediately and like read the last page and be like, okay, that character lives or that character, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it, folks. Come no. on. And, but if you do, tell me why. Let's talk about it. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to know because I will lose respect for you if I know that. That's about fine. You. You're not invited to the conversation, Seth. <laughs> this will be a book review podcast. So then he has, after Misery, he has A Few Good Men, which is one of the big political dramas, right? Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise. All of these movies are released within eight years. Eight years from Spinal Tap to A Few Good Men. It's almost one every year. And they're almost all some of the best, most well respected for the genres. They all do good. I mean, it's just, it's unreal. In this time, he works with the writers Nora Ephron, Aaron Sorkin, Stephen King, William Goldman, and Christopher Guest, who, again, are like, it's like, If you worked with any one of those over your career, that would be a really big deal. Likewise, Nora Ephron wrote and directed two out of three of the most well-loved and highly regarded American romantic comedies, When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, and You've Got Mail, which You've Got Mail is an update of Shop Around the Corner. All three star Meg Ryan, which is insane. It's Is crazy. It? She's a delight. Yes. She's the best part of all three of those movies. It's just wild that Efron like kept going back to her to play these three different characters. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. 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 And for Efron, all three of those movies come out within a decade of each other. So in the same yeah. decade, she writes and produces three of the best romantic comedies ever. Massive talent behind this movie. Billy Crystal, I mean, what else can you say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I had this in my notes and then I erased it as the years kept going on. But when we first, when Harry first meets Sally and they're straight out of college, and of course they look a little bit younger, right? Makeup and hair. Uh, well, uh, li- like they're I'm saying, they being l- passed off. As sure, a little sure, bit but they look a little younger. <laughs> Sally air, looks good. Air quotes here. <laughs> but like looking at Billy Crystal as a young person, and then hearing yeah. his voice, it threw me. Yeah, even though I, I under, do you? I was like, that's not what you look like. I'm used to your yeah. voice coming out of an older version of Billy Crystal. Yes. The eight. The right. That was a note that I deleted because I'm like, this doesn't need to be said. But clearly it does because here I am The straight it. hair. We yeah. know that Billy Crystal does not have straight hair. But I get it, right? <laughs> so we had to show this, them. He's got younger. straight, fluffy kind of like, yeah. I don't buy it, dude. I don't buy it at all. You know that um, Steve Buscemi <laughs> picture that always goes around? What's up, fellow kids? Yes. Yes. <laughs> 
that is Billy Crystal in this movie. It's just like, dude, try again or yeah. have them meet a little later. I mean, I know I, I would have been there on day on that day. I'd be like, nope, we got to do this over. Yeah. We cannot proceed. Do you think it was necessary to have them meet or not necessary? Do you think it's believable that we meet them in these like five year increments? No, it's, in, I mean, it's interesting. It's an interesting detail to their story because throughout the movie, we keep getting intercuts of old couples on this little yeah, couch. Yeah, the little vignettes. And honestly, I want, just wanted that to be the movie. I agree with you. Yeah. That was my favorite part. Yeah. And it yeah. turns out that that kind of is the movie because that's where right. we start. That's where it ends. The reason the title is what it, the title is is because this is the story of how they get together, right? We're just yeah. hearing the very, very, very long extrapolated version. So I don't know that it was necessary for them to meet multiple times, but it happens, you know, it 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 makes for a more interesting story, I suppose. Like you and Anthony met in high school, right? Like how did you guys meet? Like no. what is that story? No? No. Yeah, we met through John, Sam was dating John at the time. Okay. All right. And then Aunt would come over. Actually, Aunt was dating this girl and Sam was dating Andrew's brother and the four of them used to hang out. Okay. Which is wild. Cause I but you and Anthony went to the same school, no? We did. Anthony went to the same high school as us, but he was on the outer circle. Nobody was friends with him. Ex so you really didn't know him in school? No. Occasionally oh, okay. I'd be like, oh, it's that tall tan kid that I yes. see at Blaine shows. But That's a fantastic description of Anthony. He is. He's tall, dark, and handsome. What can I say? Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I would, did not know him in high school. Okay. And it's funny how he went to our high school, but was not friends with any of our friends. That's like the story Except, of the people who were I know, like, I know, oh, I know. We lived, we lived in the same building, but we met in Chicago or whatever. Right. It's so true. Yeah. I was thinking like if we were part of this little vignette telling our story, it'd be like, we were watching Lost. And then she <laughs> asked. Or then he asked, would you make out? You want to make out in 10 minutes? Right. Right. Whatever I, our story is. I can't remember what episode we told that story on. Yeah, I don't remember either. Was that a Freaks and Geeks episode? Or maybe it was I don't know. A when we episode? did February, we did Love a lot of romantic mine. stories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We so, do. I'm sure that's been told. If you're interested in hearing that crazy story, go back and listen to... It's not crazy. <laughs> it's, so, yeah, it's, okay, not crazy. Right. Sure, yeah. okay. it's not crazy. Sure, yeah. It's not crazy. Any hoozles, how did you meet Jean Marie? So we had... Not we didn't meet, but we actually were like in the same place like five years before we actually met. Whoa. And we didn't know it until later. Yeah, we were at the same concert that was like a few hours from both of our homes. And when we were getting to know each other, we were just talking about different music. And I said like, oh, yeah, well, I, w I went to this show. And she was like, oh, I saw them too. And I said, where did you see them? And she said, Fishkill, New York. And I said, that's where I saw them. And in talking, I was in the mosh pit at that show, and I lost my shoe. And she said, yeah, I remember someone, like, lost their shoe. And I said, that was me. Wow. Because for a while, that was, like, my thing. I don't know why. I didn't do it on purpose. Whenever I would go in the mosh pit, my shoes would come off. They I clearly just, weren't tied tight enough. Probably, yeah. Or yeah. I was just going pretty hard, and various things were flying off my body. What a time. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, like, so that's part of, like, how, how we met. We were in the same place and then years later met up again, totally yeah. unknowing. So I, I buy it. I totally buy it, you know. You have these two random that's encounters. True. I guess that's true. Okay, I take back everything I said or edit it all out, Seth. <laughs> the whole thing. And the other thing that it does is it, it does show us their ideas – and their attitudes towards each other changing over the years instead of it just being like a whirlwind six month relationship where they go through. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I buy it. I just wish I didn't have to live through Billy Crystal's horrendous hairpiece. And then in the, in the middle meeting, his hair is like really short and he has no facial hair. Ooh, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Yeah. 
Well, we have to show the different ages. Right. Yeah. So. Well, once he's once he gets the beard, I'm like, okay, we're, we're here. in safe territory. Yeah. Finally, yeah. I can open my eyes and uncover my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, safe. Wow. I'm safe from Billy Crystal's bed. <laughs> we are offended. <laughs> I am. I am very offended. We have Carrie Fisher in this movie, and we talked about her already in Drop Dead Fred. Patreon.com slash Movie Friends Podcast. Drop Dead Fred. Funny episode we did with our friend Krista. Mm-hmm. And it was so weird how she was playing a very similar character who's just like having affairs and freewheeling. and I know, and looked exactly the same. Exactly the same, yeah. You could copy and paste, and it's the yeah. same role, almost in like the same outfits. Well, it's the 80s, yeah. 80s, 90s, yeah. How did you feel about Carrie Fisher and Bruno Kirby like ending up together? Okay with they're it. two friends. Yeah. Yeah, that made sense to me. I mean, they got to they got together quick. Oh, yes. Well, I think that that may have been a case of they were both so miserable with the dates that they were on that they found each other because they go on this double date. Yeah. You know, Harry is trying to set up her friend, and Sally is trying to set up her friend, and they think, oh well, our two friends will get together, and that will work perfectly. And it's just horrible not working out and so they kind of go off together so i think maybe that's why they were like (laughs) yeah but they they legitimately bonded i mean she quoted something from his article that's that's pretty significant yeah if someone quoted something to me i don't know that i would immediately be like oh i said that wow i'd be like oh my god oh no oh no that's usually my reaction when people like remember when be like uh (laughs) <laughs> Why do you remember that? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Bruno Kirby in this movie is really funny. At that date scene, he has the line, I think restaurants are more important than they're supposed to. What is it? It's crazy. Yeah. Or no, they're trying to be more important than they're supposed to be. Yeah. And then he it's says ridiculous. pasta is the quiche of the 80s. I know. What was that? Do you think oh. that's something that people truly felt in the 80s? We can't relate sure, to I mean, that. We there's can't always, relate. There's always like it foods, right? Especially in New York, right? Yeah, right, right. And so right now, maybe we'd be moving into like plant-based meat. Yeah, you know? yeah. There was the cronut for a little bit. And so maybe at this time in the late 80s, pasta was a big thing, but it's like, that's such a staple, like you it's know what I mean. So weird. It's yeah, but weird I thought statement. that that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Did you find Harry annoying at all during the first five years, even the first ten years? I felt that like Aunt watched this movie with me, yeah. and then when we got to the Cat's Deli scene, he said the famous line as she said it. Yes. I'll have what she's having. Had like, he seen it before? I guess so, because he remembered that line. Like, he said it as she said it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've seen this movie. But I feel like maybe when I first watched it, I would find Harry's dialogue more funny. And then this time around, I was like, you're actually really irritating me. And if this continues the way it continues, I'm going to have to bail out. Because I (laughs) actually can't stand you. But you're young, and we'll wait till you get a little bit older. Which we do. Sure. I want to know, did you feel that way or did you just find him like straight off funny? No, no. Okay. If we go back to the very beginning, I think he's supposed to be framed as obnoxious. Sally is like sitting in the car and he's just making out with his girlfriend, like full yeah. on making out. But she's also making out back. No. Amanda's also making out too. Oh, like, sure, sure, sure. You can't sure. just blame him. Okay, well... But put that in tandem with him reaching into the back seat. Yeah. Putting his butt in her face. Okay. Pulling out the biggest grapes <laughs> I've ever seen. I know. Chewing the grapes and then spitting them at her window. Yeah. I don't think that we're supposed to like him in the beginning. Yeah. Okay, good. And so I don't, I don't like Harry. And through a lot of the movie, I don't really like Harry. He's just very What full they're of trying to present to us is that the dialogue he's saying is funny. His mannerisms yeah. are funny. Yeah. And I'm like, 
mm, more irritating to me. Definitely. It's definitely in the and, beginning. And, yeah. and not to cut you off, because I brought up Ant into this scenario of us watching, I could also, I could view Ant's mannerisms of Ant being like, if this continues, I'm going to bail out. Because right. I also can't stand him. The grape thing, I wrote the grape, that was my first note. Spitting grapes at the window. That was, that was the first thing that I wrote down as I was watching this movie. And as I rewatched it, I was just like, I can't get over how disgusting this is. Like, you don't even check to see if the windows roll down. Like, you don't feel wind as she's driving. Like, you're a moron. Right, exactly. It's total not in touch with the things surrounding him. Yeah. He's just, hey, this is me, man. I'm not, not, blech. I'm not a fan of any spitting. Same. Like when someone spits and catches it in their mouth. Ew. When when someone spits and like slowly spits and then sucks it back up. If you ever want to make me throw up, just do that in front of me. Kids would do that all the time when I was My dad up. used to do that. Oh, It'd God, It'd be like his no. party trick. Not that he was whipping this out at nice dinners and stuff, but <laughs> he'd be like... If he did it at a nice dinner, though, I would actually be like, that guy's really cool. That's really, really cool. Ugh. So gross. Any type of sunflower seed. Yeah. Ew. You know, people are the grape with the seed. You know what? Just chew up the seeds and swallow them. Just get seedless grapes. That was my biggest thing. Yeah. I mean, maybe you were like, oh, no, I didn't check. Suck it up. Chew up up the seeds. Yeah, You're in a stranger's car Get a who's napkin. doing you a favor. No, I'm not even going that way. If it goes in your mouth, it stays in your mouth. It, there is no, that's it. No, no, no. Because sometimes things fly in there. You swallow it. No. You get a bug in your mouth. Absolutely <laughs> not. If a bug is flying in my mouth, it's coming you out. <laughs> no. Nope. You get it. Nope. You just got to chew. <laughs> swallow Ew. real quick. What? No. That is actually one of my least favorite things. I don't know if this is a universal problem, but you know, like the tiny little flies or like bugs or gnats or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, when you're just walking down the road, talking or singing or having a good time Skipping. and you breathe and yeah. And when a tiny bug just flies into your mouth and you're suddenly like ah, 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 choking and coughing. How often Horrible. does this happen to you? This happens to me. Way more than I think it should happen. Okay, because that really never happens to me. Oh, I get bugs in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Harry's anyway, obnoxious. Harry's obnoxious. obnoxious. And yeah. I think even later on, he's just all screwed up. Like, all of his ideas about, like, love, and they're all very childish. And I mean, I wish I had his confidence when he was younger to be spitting the seeds and then to be like, you're attractive. I, w- I wanted to slap him. When he when they're at the dinner, they're at the diner. Right. Yeah. You're really, you're, you're very attractive. Okay. Like, fuck you. And she's like, you're coming on to me. And he's like, no, I'm not. But we know, knowing him, that he definitely was. In he was. Yeah. I, I've had those moments where you're like, wow, you're really handsome. <laughs> or like, wow, you're, you're actually a pretty person. You know what you I mean? said and that? Not, no, 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 not necessarily. It's just like the realization. Of oh, like, oh, sure. Yeah, like, oh, huh. Yeah. Okay. That person but looks you don't, nice. you don't say that to a person at a late night diner when you have an 18-hour drive ahead of you and you're trying to not be a creepy weirdo. And also if you are dating her good friend or right. in this stage of life good friend. She's not that right. great of a friend, as we find out. It's interesting. I watched a movie yesterday that just came out this year called past lives the main character in that is a playwright named nora oh wow (laughs) yeah who like moves you know nora efron moved from new york city to california when she was really young there's so many similarities and so the whole time i'm watching past lives it was like in between my watches of when harry met sally and like researching about Nora Ephron's life. I was just like, I, I feel like I'm stuck in a loop and I'm just seeing the same story in everything that I'm seeing. Like everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing Billy Crystal in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> and these like explorations of, uh. because I think it's universal, but we're, we're recycling the same explorations of 
what does it mean to be in a relationship and have feelings for a different person? You and I covered mm-hmm. Brief Encounter like really early on, one of my favorite mm-hmm. movies of all time. And that's a movie from a different country, from a totally different generation. And then we're here exploring the same themes in 1989, and then we're here exploring the same themes in 2023. I think that the themes of romance and the relationship between men and women, I don't think that's ever going to stop, even though we've answered them. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's no, been because answered. every situation is different, and it's all part of the human experience. Yeah. So to answer your question... Yes, I found him very irritating. A thousand minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Can you can you relate to being around a, a balding guy with a beard who won't stop talking? <laughs> I may know someone. <laughs> I do think that Harry, when they're in their friendship mode, that's my favorite part of this movie. I agree. Like I mean, before, besides the vignettes, I said the vignettes were my right. favorite. Those are those are great. But yeah, like yeah. before they get together, before they hook up, and they're just talking to each other and being critical of each other because they're friends. They're not in a relationship. You know, when when you're in a romantic relationship, sometimes, especially early on, it's hard to be very like open and critical because you're trying yeah. to like win this person over. You know, you're showing everyone pretty much your Instagram filtered life in real life. All of our instincts are pointing towards how do I make myself as attractive to this person as possible? Yeah. And so it's, it's, it can be difficult, not impossible. You should. You should always speak up for yourself and for the truth and for your values. But the dumb part of our brain takes over. <laughs> and we think, ah, uh, maybe they don't really feel that way. Or uh, maybe they'll change one day. Or uh, I, can, I can live with this. <laughs> Put it down, put it down, put it down. Right, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, do, we'll put a pin in it. We'll, we'll come back to this when I have more leverage in this situation and right. in their life, you know? Right. But I love it when they're just friends with each other. Yeah. I think it's some of the funniest parts, and it's when I really, like, buy their relationship the most. Yeah, Because I agree. both of them, I mean, we talked about how annoying Harry is, I'm not going to come down on Sally, but if you order like this in a restaurant, I think that you should be kicked off of this planet. That's how my sister orders every meal we go home to. Why? God. Because because she's gluten free and she has to make sure the fish is wild caught and dressing always has to be on the side. And does your hummus have milk in it? Every restaurant we go to. That's how Sam orders. But I also always order my dressing on the side, sauce on the side. Sidebar, uh, one of my favorite orders with sauce on the side are sweet potato fries with marinara sauce on the side. That's my diner order. Okay. It's good, Seth. It's Listen, some of the other stuff, questionable, this is good. I'm not a hater, okay? Uh, Your first reaction was full-on haterade, so... I don't know if it was haterade, just skepticism. Skepterade. <laughs> skepterade. <laughs> Sipping on that skepterade. One of my things with ordering in restaurants is you're going to that restaurant. You are putting yourself in the hands of those cooks. What do they think is best? Let them do it. However yeah. they're preparing that dish, you let them do it. If you don't want it, go home and make it yourself. No. Trying to bring in, well, this is how my mom made it, or this is how they make it down the street. Get out of here. Like, literally get out of here. Anyway, this is obviously something I feel very passionate about because I think Sally should get booted from the planet. Allergies is different. Like you said, you know, gluten-free. If you're gluten-free, go ahead. Like, list your allergies. But to be like, oh, (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I'm okay with it. I mean, it, it can get a little annoying and frustrating sometimes. When you go out with, like, a group of people and everyone's, like, being cool and then there's, like, the one person yeah, my sister. who's, like, complaining or being a yep. stickler or sending things back, I just want to leave. I just want to crawl under the table and be like, oh, my gosh. Because mm-hmm. I know that that waitress or waiter, they're going into the back and you'll never believe this and everyone now of hates course. you. Of course. Of right. course. I've only sent things back if meat comes on my plate. Because it's something I will not eat. Yes, and and if you have an allergy, if you have some, you know, right, absolutely. 
I have eaten things in restaurants that were literally the wrong thing. Like if I order, you know, a Philly cheesesteak and they bring me a chicken parm, I just say, well, okay. And I eat it. This is what I was chosen to eat today. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? You could speak up, but okay. Anyway, moving on. But why speak up? Right. Speaking of speaking up in restaurants, Mm. how do you like that segue? It's me coming (laughs) in my segue. Would you ever, have you ever ridden a Segway? I have not. Aunt always jokes when we're on vacation, like, hey, let's do a Segway tour because he knows I absolutely 100% will not do that because I have a fear of like moving. Okay. Yeah. 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 Things like a bicycle, not keen with that. A Segway. Right. Plus, I'd be the one in the back being like, wait for me. But Segways move at the same speed. Yeah, but don't you have to you keep think, a balance? You <laughs> think you you'd to... get the dumpy segue? No, but don't you? Don't, aren't you controlling how fast you go? I've never segued. I'm pretty I have, sure. I have no clue. I'm pretty sure you control your speed, and I would I be have going a at a snail's pace. Yeah. You and Anthony are such different heights. Right. Are there different heighted segways? Like, how I would know, you be on Seth, the same segue? I have not done a Segway tour. I would only do one if I could literally be on the same Segway with Anthony and he can control it. I feel like the biggest contribution of Segways to American culture is Joe Bluth from Arrested Development constantly using one. Yes. And that's the only thing I think of with Segways. Right. I mean, I would want to try one with no one else around. Well, someone who knows how to, someone who knows how to work a Segway. So you want like a private... Late night. <laughs> I would segue love lesson. A private segue lesson. That'd be great, actually. Okay. All right. If you can Anthony, set that up. Anthony, if you're listening to this. Date idea. There's an idea. You gotta get a professional segue <laughs> trainer to meet you and Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> at night in the Target parking lot. They can come to our house. We'll go in the Did- street. Did you learn to drive in Target and Walmart parking lots? No. Um, That's where I learned. No. Mm-mm. I don't know yeah. where I learned. Because it's nighttime, though. it's empty, you just drive around. Nope. Anyway, none of this is relevant to what I was going to say. I had a good segue, and then I ruined it. You did. Speaking of speaking Shh. up in restaurants, Shh. Shh. by far the Shh. most famous scene in this film is the scene in Katz's Deli. This scene has been counted among some of the best comedic scenes of all time, the most iconic film moments of all time. The line, I'll have what she's having, has been put on lists for the most iconic and greatest lines in film history. And it wasn't even in the original script. Yeah. Which I think is awesome. I think it's really, really funny. Did you like look into this scene at all? The only thing I knew was it's Rob... Reiner's mom. Yes. And that when she passed away, they put a sign in Kat's diner where it's like, oh, how good oh. she's having. You can, what do you think I, what do you think I meant? I thought you were going to say that when Rob Reiner's mom passed away, they put on her headstone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have what she's <laughs> Wow. Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Maybe I should put that on mine when I, I die. Think so yeah, you I'll should. have. <laughs> I'll have what she's Seth, having. Seth Vargas, 1988, 2025. What? I'll have what she's having. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling it now. No. Anyway. Anyway. The scene originated from Rob Reiner coming to Nora Ephron and saying, "Okay, we told you all this stuff about." you know, men and what men do that women don't know about. So you tell us something about women, you know, the way that Nora would tell it is she felt like it was almost like a challenge to her. Like, you know, we told you all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. What, you know, what do you think men don't know about women? And so she tells him like, yeah, women fake orgasms. Right. And this made Reiner so angry he like went and gathered up other women and brought them in before Nora Ephron. <laughs> and they were like, this, you know, she says that this is true. Is this true? And they were all like, yeah. 
<laughs> so crazy because it's absolutely true. Yeah, and I think that I feel two ways about this scene. Okay. Why don't you go first before I give my two ways? Oh, I thought it was great. I thought it was, if this scene felt very relatable, because I feel like I've had this conversation with some of my very uh, overly confident guy sure. friends. And one of my favorite things would be like, hm, let's bring you down sure. a notch and BT dubs. Women do fake orgasms. And we've talked about that. I mean, I have faked orgasms. My friends have faked them. I thought Meg Ryan's performance was great in this scene. She did so well. I love how everyone's looking around, looking at her, and then she just goes back to normal and eating because that's exactly how it absolutely is. I mean, we know what we're doing. I think that it's a good scene. I think that Meg Ryan is very funny. Just yeah. in general, she's very funny. Yeah. I think that it brings up a good point, right? We've talked before about my feelings about the education of sexuality, the education of mm-hmm. anatomy, how important it is for people to be educated as to the realities of things because so much of our sexuality lives within our mind and it's, a, it's like a private thing, mm-hmm. right? You mix that with a culture that is hypersexual but also hyper repressed at the same time. And it's like a recipe for disaster. So I love that this scene exists because Rob Reiner at this point is a man. He's been married and he doesn't even know that this is like a reality. Right. And for that, I think it is very important and iconic and I'm all for it. Story wise, I think it's a bit of a mess and I think it, Somewhat Why? betrays what we know about Sally up to this point. How? Up to this point, do you think that Sally would do this in a crowded restaurant surrounded by people? I do. It feels very out of character for you don't think so? No, I feel like if she was if she was probed and she needed to prove a point, you know, poked, probed. <laughs> it's an interesting working. choice. <laughs> it is an interesting choice. If given the opportunity to prove a point, I think 100% she would do okay. it, yeah. Regardless of who it is. It could have been someone else that was questioning. And I'm not... Or not questioning, but, you know, coming off overly right. confident of, yeah. It's just to me, like, it feels like Harry is more the one who's, like, like loud and outspoken, and he's going to really drill a point home. I, I Yeah, I mean... I'm not going to like needle it apart, but it just, it feels like this scene stands so far out from the rest of the movie and from the rest of what we see from her character. I guess so. But I also think it gives her another layer and the fact of it's how she does Mm -hmm. it. She just starts. And then when she finishes, she just picks up her fork and starts eating like, and that's how it's done. So you actually know nothing. If she was trying to prove a point of like, Hey, Look, this is how believable it can be. I was like, all right, this is this is a little insane here. I don't think no? so. Because in his dumbass yeah. mind, he thinks this no no one ever faked with him because he knows. Yeah. Right? And so hearing that, like if you were to close your eyes and you hear that, you're like, oh, this woman's having an orgasm. <laughs> I think she did a good job. So yeah, I, I don't mean to like harp on that. It's just Mm-hmm. I think it feels weird for her character to me. Obviously, I'm the only person on planet Earth. Not true. Correct. There was a person who agreed with well, me, and his name was Roger Ebert. Oh, jeez. A man agreed with you? Great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But anyway, he liked the movie like I like the movie. It just it, it seems so outlandish. In a film that is plotless, it's all grounded in realistic conversations between people. Very grounded. You know what I mean? This feels very like proto Seinfeld. Mm, mm-hmm. This is before before Sunrise. Mm-hmm. Of course we've had walking and talking movies before. But even Efron and Reiner, they thought that the movie wouldn't do well because there's no plot. There's like no story. <laughs> and as I was writing down my notes, 
I, I kept looking at my notes and I was like, these are just quotes. Like my, my notes for yeah. this movie, it really was just quotes. Very little happens. They're just in different situations, which is like, of course, I'm just describing how a story is told, but very little happens plot wise. Yeah, but the story is, you know, you're going to meet these two people. You're just waiting for them to get together. That's the story. And now you have to sit through the ride. I didn't know that they were going to get together. The first time I saw it. Yeah, I didn't know that they were going to get together. Yeah, well, summer, slow to arrive. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm just kidding. No, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, maybe it's not. You're going into a rom-com. And I, I just got the feeling that we're not, this is not the type of movie that's going to show me these two are going to be best buds because we started off with the sexual part. And because of that, that led me to, oh, y'all will end up together at the end because that's what, that's just how it's going to go. I'm not dissing the writing or anything. Yeah. It was just obvious. I would have liked to have seen a story where they, they just stay friends and they end up with other people. And- I would have... Loved yeah. that. I love friendship, and I love when male-female friendships occur, and we see that on right. screen, even though the sex got involved. But it would have been nice to be like, okay, we did it, and it was weird. I like you better as a friend. Yeah. And it was only right. once. I would have been happy with that. There are some really funny situations, though, where it is just conversations, and it's very smart on their part to not just have so the scene in Katz's Deli originally was going to just be in their apartment like they were just going to be talking to each other and they're alone it was actually Meg Ryan's idea she was like it'd be really funny if they did this in a restaurant like if this was in public and it was Billy Crystal's idea for the line you know someone someone at the next table will say I'll have what she's having one of my favorite parts and it's because it has one of my favorite things that humans as a group do is when Billy Crystal and Bruno Kirby are at the sporting event and they're talking and they keep getting interrupted by doing the wave. <laughs> yeah, that was great. It's that like as so they're good. doing the wave, Harry is talking about how his wife arranged for her to be moved out of the apartment and how the moving guys came and she's in love with somebody else. And then he just keeps standing up to do the wave in between. I loved that. That was, that was really funny. And the wave is one of my favorite things. Is it? How do you feel? Yeah. I love the wave. I love the wave too. And I, I, you didn't do it. Stupid. Oh, sorry. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Woo. Woo. Virtual wave. I don't know why. I don't know why I love the wave. I think it's just so dumb. But it looks so cool. It looks cool. It's like a good example of people doing things because everybody else is doing it. Yeah. But sometimes taking part in things that everyone else is doing is actually like good and fun. Yeah. The wave is that. And the wave is, it's like harmless. Mm -hmm. No one's getting hurt doing the wave. We love the wave. No one's getting hooked on drugs doing the wave, you know. I don't know why you went there, but sure. Talking about yeah, doing I know. things because other people, okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. <laughs> At one point, I think I had written a tweet that was like, maybe the reason I'm so depressed is because it's been so long since I've done the wave. <laughs> maybe like the occasional insertion of the wave into my life was just the thing that like kept me afloat wow get this man a crowd i mean yeah you you know you never know can't be disproven seth if we ever do a live show we have to make the audience do the wave oh yeah even if it's like 10 people by i don't care and we'll go on the end so we can be a part of the wave because as much as i want to view it i also want to be a part of it i think the other thing that i like about the wave is keeping something going longer yeah. than it should. Like when the wave dies, it's always like, no, come on. Let's do it keep, again. Yeah, like keep it. And then, yeah, you're like, all right, we're going to start the wave again. And everyone's like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> and then you go and it's like the eighth time around. You're like, I can't believe this is still going. And it's by great. nine and 10, you're like, right, I'm getting bored. But then when 11 and 12 comes around, you're like, I'm reinvigorated. I'm glad this is still happening. It's I love great. the wave. I love the wave too. Pro wave. You had written in your notes, 
And it was something that didn't jump out to me until I read your notes. And then the second time watching it, I was like, yeah, this is insane. Carrie Fisher pulls out a Rolodex. I think this movie does a pretty good job of being somewhat timeless. Obviously, the fashion and the looks. The phones. The power walking through the park. Oh, my God. The outfit. I, I don't know if people power walk anymore. There used to be a power walking club at, at Suffolk Community College. My, my nice. professor was part of it. But, yeah. I mean, but also the use of phones, the computer. But, yeah, it's pretty timeless. Yeah. But I, I think it does a good job of being timeless. Yeah. But that Rolodex, man. Yo, Woof. man. There's just, and like I said to you, there's just so many questions surrounding it. Like, she just whips it out. And no, and, and the other two don't even blink an eye. Like, this is normal. Right. Wouldn't you just have a phone book? And I think that's what, it's supposed to be like an update. Like, in the 50s and 60s, people had a little black book. And that was where they kept their right. romantic people. Sure. I guess. But my mom so always this is had like, a phone ah, book. Like a the tiny... little black book for the 80s is a Rolodex. It's ridiculous, but I also want it. I would love yeah. like a bag that looks like a Rolodex with a strap. Ooh. And then like I could put stuff in it, but also I would have cards of numbers with, you know, people I liked. Maybe we need an updated Rolodex. I think so. Should I get one from yeah. my desk? I hate them. Yeah, I mean, if they're not I was part functional. of several businesses where I was very much a part of digitizing oh, Rolodexes. Me too. Me and it too. felt so good every time to like throw that thing away and be like, goodbye, Rolodex. I agree. I was also part of that. I used to do side work with setting up websites for people who are retired and have clubs. And this one mm. woman hired me to make her website and make her website. She's like, hey, I need you to get this picture on the website. I was like, can you email it to me? And she's like, I don't know how to do that. So she sent me a physical copy of the picture that she took on her phone. She no. Didn't, she didn't know how to get it from her phone to the to email. So she printed out the, the, the copy from her phone. She printed it sent it to me, and then I had to scan it to put it on the website. Amazing. And it was, an, it was 8 by 11 that she Amazing. blew it up. Oh, yeah. Crinkled and all. The Pictionary scene was all improvised. Really? Which I love, yes. Baby fish mouth. <laughs> I love that. I also, I, I hate games, but I do love Pictionary. I really do. So I was going to ask you, yeah. I know that you don't like, like card Board games and games. stuff. So. I was at a party at your house recently, and at the end of the night, you guys were playing Werewolf. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what is, like, the Michelle and Anthony, okay, game time game? There's no Michelle and Anthony game time game. Okay. If there is, it's Scrabble, which I enjoy for five minutes in, and I'm like, oh, why did I decide to play this? Ant loves Scrabble. Okay. We're big into um, Dutch Blitz. What the heck is that? It's a card game. So cool. if people are over, it's like, all right, let's play Dutch Blitz. All right. Um, I mean, if people are over, I I love pasta. Pastas are great. I like card games. Game of pasta. Life, Werewolf, Pictionary. I don't like counting games, long games. We've talked, we've definitely talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I also wanted to ask you, there's a scene in this movie where Bruno Kirby and Carrie Fisher are arguing about a glass table that has like a, a wheel inside of it. Yeah. And Harry goes into this thing about how one day they're going to get divorced and they're going to argue about it. And you know, when, when you come together into like one home, occasionally you don't always agree. So do you guys have like a one item that the other person doesn't like or like that you hold on to? Um, we've lived together for so long that it's mm. really hard to pinpoint that. Do you guys have anything? Not really, because a lot of our sensibilities and styles kind of like go together. Yeah, same you know with I mean? Aunt like, and I. Yeah. If she thinks something's like funny to hang on the wall, I'm like, yeah, that is that's yeah. funny. Or if she thinks something's good, you know. Right. So yeah, I just I couldn't relate to this whole idea of like hating each other's things. No. Mm mm. The last scene I want to talk about before we kind of move on the three-way phone call mm -hmm. after they hook up and then they call 
their friends. That was really done with three different cameras in three different locations. They said it was extremely complicated. It took them a whole day. They finished it in 61 takes. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Very impressive. I also love the shot of them laying in bed and they're on the phone and they're watching the movie together. And as I was watching it, I was like, this is like what Michelle and I do. <laughs> it's just not live. <laughs> oh my God, like, that's it's like the so first film true. podcast where they're like just watching it and commenting on it as they talk. <laughs> Have you ever watched a movie with someone while you're on the phone together? I don't think so. No. I haven't done movies, but Krista and I would do stuff like that, like TV shows. Sure. When we were oh, yeah. Like, oh, put this on. This is on the TV. It's easier yeah. when it's television. Yes. Because you don't have to sync it. Well, I mean, that's so true. But we sync. We do live watches on Total Betty every week. Yeah. And so our patrons join us. And it's always like, we're paused at 33 seconds oh, on this horrible. app. Yeah. It works out. but. So the movie was a success. Made for $16 million, makes 92.8. In 2023 money, that's like $220 million. Wow. <laughs> for a romantic comedy. Great. Where the biggest set piece is a party. Mm-hmm. I do love their final scene and the things that they say to each other. I, I think that it's very nice when he says, yeah, I didn't just come here because I'm lonely. I didn't just come here because it's New Year's Eve. I came here because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start right now. And I thought that was great. Yeah, I thought that was good. No, I thought it that is was good. good it, it is good. It is good. And I love that she just says to him, I hate you, Harry. I hate you. And then yeah. kisses him. I yeah. thought that that was good, too. What was up with the kissing, by the way? What do you mean? Before they got together. Oh, like They would just kisses? keep like, kissing on the lips? Dude, is that a thing? I don't know. I've definitely talked to Liz about this before on some of our teen shows. I personally have never had that type of relationship with my guy friends where we just have yeah. like, little pecs. But but even your girlfriends. No. I've kissed them on the cheek and stuff, though. Yeah. Ki- look, I think the cheeks, you know what I mean? That's... If you're friends with somebody, you're kissing on the cheeks. Or forehead or hand. I think, ooh, hand. Ooh. Like, ooh. ooh, I don't know about that. Oh. Well, I don't know if I've ever said, ooh, in my life. Now you did. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, you got me. Yeah. Yeah, I think like the forehead is more like. Sweet. I- I'm proud of you. I care about you. I'm here for you. The cheek is like the mwah, mwah, you know, the Italian Long Island mwah, mwah, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's just like neutral zone. <laughs> Although like TBH, like I really never want anybody kissing me. Just, oh, and I never want to kiss like, anybody. Don't yeah. come near me. And also yeah. I only really hug you if I really like you. Family, I, family like events. Or like funerals, no, I, shit like that gives me anxiety because I'm like, I don't want to touch you. I used to, yeah. So, you know, with my wife's family, I used you hug every time you see them. Ugh. But we live close. And so I, I was hugging multiple people multiple times a week. And one day I just said, I was like, yeah, I, I really don't like hugging. So I'm not going to hug you anymore. Right. So now people walk in and I'm like, hey, what's up? And yeah. that's it. And there's I, no, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm with you. Hug culture. Yeah. So you and my, you and I might never hug each other then. I think we have <laughs> hugged, but only because it's been like, like a group of people will hug you, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, well, sure. I guess I well, should yeah, hug okay. Seth. Yeah. Well, if anyone is listening, don't hug me. Don't hug us. If you, mean I'm us, a big fan of like a handshake. I, don't I think like handshakes that are great. No, no? well, because you know you. Sometimes you slip in the the finger wiggle. Oh, and you to tickle be a the little weird. I've done yeah. that. <laughs> Hell yeah! I like that. Yeah. I like a finger so you wiggle. Get a, you get like five people. You only do it to two of them. It's kind of like a, it's a what's going to happen. Though. It's a little creepy though. It's oh, I don't creepy. like. I don't like the sensation that goes through my body when that happens. No, it's, it makes you feel real weird. It's real weird. But just going back to the hugs, like I like when I think about like if we were to meet our movie friends, I would hug them. Oh yeah. There's like a genuine love there. Yes. Yeah. But once. Only once. I wouldn't be hugging on him. I wouldn't be kissing him on the lips like Harry and Sally are doing and all the time. No. No yeah. kissing. Ugh. Gross. Black. 
So they did consider a sequel because the movie made a lot of money. It was re- really well received. And they basically were just like, we don't know what that would be. Like, what what could it possibly be? You know what I mean? And so I'm glad boring. that they didn't do it. Thank yeah. God. Probably it would have involved them having kids and just exploring that next stage of their life. No, thank you. I don't know if we've already said it, but this movie is like really well loved. Yeah, you've said it. Super highly rated. Rotten Tomatoes, 91. Wow. Okay. Metacritic, 76. And a lot of people who responded to us, they they really love this movie. So we asked some people on Twitter what they thought about the movie. Betsy. Betsy. Gorham.Betsy. She says, best rom-com of all time. Full stop. Wow. I'm happy for I, you, Betsy. Yeah, I feel That's differently. That's great. I do too. But yay, Betsy. And, any at before equals before equals said just the other day, I was thinking about how this movie is the one I recommend to people who don't typically like rom-coms since most don't like how unserious and predictable rom-coms tend to be. I love that about them. This movie feels very realistic and grounded in comparison. I think I do agree with that. If you don't like rom-coms, all of the realistic talk might, be easier for you to swallow. Even after they get together at New Year's, they're just looking at each other and he's <laughs> old lane sign is playing. And he's like, what is this song about? <laughs> I mean, true. I've, I've never I known. S- I said that too. I'm like, what does this song mean? Right, right, right. And yeah. then at the end, after they're talking about how they got together, she's like, yeah, and the coconut cake and they're just going on. And right. I think that this might be easier to swallow. So yeah. I, I agree with you, Annie. Yeah. Uh, Jacob at Lots of Scotch said it's one of the best. Lots of scotch. Jamila at Jamila Brownie. Jamila. She said, it is both the quintessential rom-com and also, unfortunately, the template for a hundred less stellar copies to come. Mm. In the trifecta of Efron slash Ryan collaborations, it is my favorite, but I think a big part of that is because it is a collaboration of both Reiner and Efron. Newman. From Newman! Movies for days. For days. Newman for days. We're getting like Newman. We're getting a quote from someone through Newman. So this is like we asked people on Twitter and then Newman asked people. What? This is, yeah. So Newman says, my friend Zach. Hey, Zach. Zach, if you're listening. Zach, Zach. Says it's in his all time top five rom coms ever made. He says it's like a Woody Allen movie without Woody Allen being involved and tackles the questions of platonic friendship between men and women very well. I've still never seen it. Oh, wait. Zach hasn't seen it or Newman hasn't seen it? Newman has never seen it. Who's Zach? I don't know. Zach, let us know who you are. Send us an email, moviefriendspodcast at gmail.com. We want to hear from Zach. Yeah, we want to hear from Zach. We like to hear from you too, Newman, so thank you. But, like, who's Zach? Where'd you find him? Yeah, hook us up, Zach. Zach. So there's some people that we do know. We're going to go to a segment of the show now where we're going to read reviews from people we don't know. It's a segment we call Half Star, Three Star, Five Star. Half Star, Three Star, Five Star. All right, these are reviews from Letterboxd.com. We start out with a half star review. It's the lowest rating you can give a movie. And we go all the way up to a five star, which is the highest rating you can give a movie. And the half star review, I will read... I guess I'll just do straight British for this one. All right. Straight yeah. Brit. Right up. Yeah. Well, I, sure. I'll try that one. All right. All right. All right. Maybe I'll do a little high. I've been going low lately. Oi, maybe my guy talks like this. He's okay. like Mickey. I liked this movie. <laughs> <laughs> no one sounds like that. All right. I liked this movie once upon a time. God, I hate it now. Harry is such a miserable character. I do not like this movie at all. Thanks. Thanks. Who is he thanking? Who are they thanking? Us. Uh, The voice kind of sounded like Pinocchio from Shrek. Okay. All right. Maybe I was channeling my my Shrek experience there. Yeah. So they liked it at one point. Hate it now. Harry is miserable. I get it. There's truth to that. Three Star Review says, the best part of this film is the old couple interviews. Yes. I can't even get words out. Hold on. Oh. 
Okay, sorry. I feel like Harry is the type of man who will be married for 20 years with kids. Then one day he will snap and kill his wife and children. Three star review. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Was that like a whiplash of like, I agree to, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah. hey, Michelle, why don't you zip it until it's finished type deal? You know what I mean? When I picked that, I was like, Michelle loves the three-star reviews. I'm going to try to get her with this one. You got it. Also, it was just a very funny. That is so review, funny. Wow. Five-star review says, nothing beats a slow burn, and no one, no one has done it better than when Harry met Sally. I mean, even though they had a year and their views and perspectives changed, the love and care for each other was still there. Harry's I love you is so simple, but so major, it just makes me want to. And then in parentheses, they said, insert scream here. The best rom-com to ever exist. Five stars. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So that's what they think. Now, what do we think? First, Michelle has a rating called Schmovie Movie Film. So what are you rating this? Is this a schmovie, a movie, or a film? This is a movie, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. And I'm going with... Three and a half stars. Okay. Yeah. It's good, and it's enjoyable. It's easy to watch. I love Meg Ryan. Thank you, Brian, for sending this over, because this was nice to watch something like this. So I'm very (laughs) glad we did it. So, yeah. I agree that this is a movie. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's very well done. Mm Mm-hmm. I think we get a lot of uh, film references throughout. We get a cool scene of Billy Crystal singing Oklahoma, maybe the worst song from Oklahoma. I thought um, we just karaoke. got Casablanca like over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, there was like a mention of the Lady Vanishes. Okay. A couple other little moments, but only a movie guy would see that. <laughs> also, Sally is a movie guy. She has all of her VHSs alphabetized in a little recipe tin next to her bed, no less. I love that. Yeah, I love that, too. That's awesome. So I agree that this is a movie. And I think when I first watched this, I rated it three and a half stars. And I think I'm still there. Wow. Three and a half. Look at us. Three and a half movie. Yep. Way to go. Us. So I don't love it, but I like it and I see why people love it. You know what I mean? This is not a total miss for me. I appreciate it. In all of its glory. When you and, you know, in your friends, your movie friends, is this how you all give reviews? I don't know. Oh. I don't have shows with other people. Well, you've you've (laughs) talked to other people. Like, on these new reviews, are you guys rating it at the end? No, not really. Oh. (laughs) Clearly you can see how much I've watched of it. Yeah, I know. Well, Well, I don't want to ruin it, you know? It's just, like, first impression kind of conversations. It's really hard... And I know that this is going to sound like the dumbest thing ever. It's really hard to like really rate and assess a movie fully when it's like just come out. You think that's dumb to say? I think that makes so much no. sense. That makes so no. much sense. I mean, I, I'll still rate new movies like, hey, this movie is great, four stars, whatever. But I think I much more prefer talking about a movie that we like know what it is now as time has gone by. You know what I mean? I think your new releases should have a rating system. Like, let's rate it three grapes or something. Like, pick a, like, we're going to... Three grapes? (laughs) Not going to trick you with grapes. I just was thinking of something and grapes came to mind. Sure. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. This is great. Now it's time to pick our next friend request movie. Here we go. Out of the little ketchup container. All right. Here we go. Do, 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 so the next do, do, movie, do. randomly selected from the cup. Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain. This was requested by Felicia. Wowie, wowie, Felicia. Cinnamaroni. Cinnamon noodle. So singing, and it's not singing. It's singing. 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 With an apostrophe. Yeah. Singing in the Rain. From 1952, directed by Stanley Donan and Gene Kelly. It's 103 minutes. Wow, I would not have thought that from the first time I saw it. I would have told you this movie's three hours long. And it's streaming on HBO Max. Great. 
or oops, sorry, Max. Max, sorry. it's Max. Not HBO Max anymore. Get it right. No, I've actually I have seen this movie. Yeah, this will be Kyle. cool because we have talked about a few old movies, but we haven't talked about these big, large production yeah. movies from this time period. So yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I oh. haven't revisited this movie in twenty years, probably. I haven't revisited this movie in probably 10 years. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. Here we go, Cinnamon Noodle. Hey, if you want to revisit us in less time than 10 years, was that a good one or no? I mean, it's all right. You can stop what you're doing right now. Give us a rating and a review. We love them. We appreciate them. You can also support the show, patreon.com slash moviefriendspodcast. It's $5 a month. You get access to additional content. We're pretty much up to like, we're like over two episodes a week now. All, when everything is said and done, it's crazy. We're like machines. There's more than you could like physically listen to, I think, in a week. It's pretty sick. And I meant sick in a good way. You also get access to our patron-only Discord. And you get our love and devotion for the rest of our lives. We will hug you, even though we don't want to. We, we will want to, actually. Yeah. Only once. You will create a desire within our hearts to hug you. Just once. Just once. Anyway, thanks, Michelle. This was fun. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, Brian. Until next time, when we're talking about singing in the rain, have a good one. Thanks for listening. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Vicora. If you like the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.